we were like thinking, we were thinking that like, you know, we'd be ready to go. And it turns out it was the opposite. We like really did not want to go back to work. And we were forgetting things that normally like you'd be in the routine of doing and like easy things. And you're just like, oh my God, like I even forgot to how to pack my suitcase. I forgot like face wash. I forgot just like dumb things that I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Um, But the trip started out, we were heading out to New York to pick up my boss and he didn't um, let me know that his wife was actually going to be joining the flight. So we w- had a bed for her made that it collapsed one day. It's kind of like an air mattress that you have to inflate. So it collapsed and we had to have it fixed. So I didn't have it on the flight. And I was really mad at myself because I could have put it on board. Like I kind of knew that where it was and I just forgot to put it on the airplane because they took it off to fix it. So I was like kicking myself. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I forgot that. So me and my pilot, we just go into like, you know, just concentration mode. Like what can we come up with for his wife to sleep on? So we're like digging through all the mattresses and everything. And all of a sudden, like I had my phone resting on one of the tables that if you like pull up the cover, it goes in and you pull the table out. My phone went in like behind the cover. So I couldn't even reach my cell phone. And when I was trying to grab it, all of a sudden it called 911. So I'm freaking out because I'm like, the cops are going to show up to our plane. Like it's corporate flying. So I'm like, my boss, he's a billionaire. And, you know, he doesn't like to deal with the drama of or your commercial flying. So I'm freaking out. Like the cops are going to come. The ladies, I can hear her voice saying, ma'am, where are you? And I could like answer the call, like through my watch. So I was like yelling, like I'm at the airport. And she's like, you're at an airport. Like, ma'am, what, where are you? I'm like, now she thinks I'm like on drugs or something. Like, I can't even think of where I was. I was just yelling. Like I I'm a flight attendant. I'm on a plane. Like I'm in New York, like I couldn't even think of the air, the airport at all. And then finally I like calmed down enough to tell her what was going on. And she's like, okay. And my pilot, he finally gets it out. So we're putting the bed together. His wife gets on, you know, she's telling me to just make it up as fast as I can. So I go to get like the air pump for like it to inflate the air mattress and it's not working. So I try another one. That one doesn't work. I go up to the cockpit and I'm like, guys, I don't have any outlet power. All the the fuse had been blown to all of our electrical power. So we didn't have coffee. The microwave didn't work. The outlets to charge your phone didn't work. Like my pilot's iPad had died and that's what they use for their navigation system. So it was like, we (laughs) were freaking out and we had a four hour flight. So we're like calling the maintenance guy and he's like, I don't know, like you just can't do anything about it. And, you know, my boss, he slept the whole time. I fed the wife spaghetti that I heated up in the oven, which I don't know how that tasted. (laughs) But um, after that whole flight, I was just like really mad at myself that I had like, well, I should have checked the power on the ground. And at least if I had known it wasn't working, like I, I was like trying to like I was getting in this mindset of like negativity and like putting myself down when I hadn't worked in so long and those things could have happened to anyone. So it was like, you know, I I was getting so mad at myself, but yesterday I flew them home and they changed up our schedule really last minute. So I had to find catering. Like I Uber eats it to the airplane. Like I had it just delivered. And I, it was just some random like restaurants. Um, and his wife is really picky. So I fed her the dinner and she even asked for the leftovers to take home with her. So after all of that, (laughs) and his wife is like the most, like will not show any emotion. She is so picky. And it was like, she was satisfied at the whole like end of that. I was just like, I could breathe. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like you did all of that. Like you should be proud of yourself, not beating yourself up. But yeah, that was my story. I was wondering if you guys like felt when you, I don't know if you were staying home from COVID, if you, when you went back to work, 
like, was it hard to transition or did you find out you wanted to do something differently, like a different like career or something? Great question. Before the two of you answer that though, I just have a question for you, Julia. Yeah. At what point did you realize that you were beating up on yourself and it was completely unnecessary to do that? Honestly, it took my, we had another flight attendant, like flight crew there for another like it was like within our company. So it was one of my coworkers. Actually, she was, she's my boss. And she, I kind of ratted on myself. I was like, I forgot all these things and I had the worst day. And she just looked at me and she's like, well, there's no way you could have known. She's like, it could have happened to anyone. It's okay. And Mm -hmm. I was just like expecting her to be mad at me. And the, her reaction is what kind of made me realize like, wow, like if she doesn't care, then I definitely shouldn't care. One thought, that one thought of hers that Mm -hmm. you realized was like, really, yeah, that that really was the case. One thought can change everything, right? Sid said that. Sid said that very thing. One thought changes everything. And then he said, if you can find that thought, what do you guys think about that? I always thought that, you know, that's really interesting. If you can find that one thought, what do you think Sid meant by that? Mm-hmm. Like changing your perspective, maybe? Or changing like the outlook of the situation? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I agree with Julia there. Like, you're, Yeah, how do you say it? Um, Yeah, it's just like the way you you approach the situation and then, you know, you're able to have a a better outcome of it or something. I just, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. I understand what she's saying. Like, I'm thinking the same thing, but it's just put into words. I don't like. And it's not easy to do when you're caught up in a, Mm-hmm. like a thought storm right like julia that was a great description yeah, of a thought storm when all those things were going wrong all i could think about is like our conversations where it's like when we like one bad thing happens all these bad things happen because you're thinking in that mindset of like negativity and like oh everything's not working or it's all working against me so yeah it, it just like showed like perfectly i'm like i was so worked up and like looking at every negative outcome that more bad things were happening. I think it's so neat though. I, I love your story. I think it's like, it's, I, I love, and I love just, yeah. Like that when you caught on to like, you know, like, Oh, I don't need to keep, you know, beating myself up. And I was thinking about it. Like for me, that one thought is just something new that just all of a sudden like occurs to me sometimes, like just out of the blue, like all of a sudden there you were in your thought storm. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, Oh, like I'm, you know, beating myself up. But I think the other thing that struck me about your story that was so cool was like, even though it felt like everything negative was happening, it was like, but you just kept like, like your resilience in it. I think that to me was so cool. Like you just kept going, okay, all right, we don't have the bed, you know, what else can I do? And it was like, you just kept going. And then, you know, your phone dials 911 and then you're like, oh, and then you eventually found, you know, something to say, something to do. And, you know, even food, right. You found something when the electricity wasn't working. Like, I think that just really stands out for me as well Is like, wow like <laughs> you were thinking on your feet or you like yes you, uh, thinking on your feet yeah. in a bad situation and, yeah, yeah. And then like you had to improvise with the yes um, yeah with, with the stove with pasta like you just gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> yeah and you know what else i think was cool all of that was really cool but you know the resiliency yes right what a great story of how quickly you bounced back as soon as you like um, broke out of that illusion of you being this terrible person. Mm -hmm. I was really (laughs) worried about being fired, honestly, but, (laughs) but you're, yeah, it is like a lot of 
like problem solving, like critical thinking and you guys making that comment really makes me realize that like, wow, I've come a long way because like before old me would have sat there and been like, well, like these are, this is the situation. I don't know. Like, it's not my problem. Like, I don't know. And just give up really. No kidding. There was a time in your life you would have done that, really. I mean, yeah. It, it, different jobs, yeah. Oh, so like yeah. different positions where it was like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was kept convincing myself throughout all of that. It's not the destination. It's the journey. It's not where you're going. It's not what you're trying to accomplish. It's the journey. And kind of like, that was what I kept repeating in my head. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of a neat, like thought that, you know, came to you too, just that you thought of that, like, you know, that to me is awesome too. Cause it's like that, just even that little bit, it's like, you get kind of hopeful, or at least to me, it's like, it shifts it from just being like, oh my God, like to being like, okay, it's a journey. Like, so I just think that's so awesome too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you popped out of the illusion of being this, um, having it be all your fault or blaming yourself. That's yeah. what you said you were doing, blaming yourself. And then at some point you heard those words and you took them in. You took them to yeah. heart. Because if I kept thinking it could have that, happened to anybody. Mm -hmm. If I kept on that train of thinking like, like I am the worst flight attendant. I'm going to lose my job. You know, I didn't do all these things. If I kept thinking that like throughout the trip, I would have, I would have just had to given up because like that's already convincing yourself that you're, you're done. Like that's the end for you. So yeah. 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 I guess it, I always think about when you say things like you can't sh really change your thoughts because like, if you try to just think new things, like it doesn't work like intentionally change your thoughts like it doesn't work because it doesn't stick but in this situation I did do that and I didn't try to do that and maybe that's why it worked out right right but you were open to it you were open to a new thought yeah that's the difference yeah yeah and so I love that it, oh yeah when a new thought came along you didn't say, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know I'm a terrible person. Don't try to change my mind. You know, you didn't do that. You, you, um, you said, yeah, that's true. I'm doing my best. It could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How cool. What a great yeah. story, you know, that any of us who will be in that situation, which, you know, it's quite possible we will be and probably probable that we'll be in a similar situation and we'll be able to, you know, recognize when we're beating up on ourselves mercilessly and, you know, hearing these stories and sharing them with one another, I think really helps when it occurs to us um, that we don't have to beat up on ourselves. Mm -hmm realize you know that oops okay what do I do now what what's what's available for me right now yeah that's why I like these groups because ev when everyone shares like stories and stuff about like what's going on in their life it's always something relatable and it's like it might not be happening in your life right now but you know give it a month or you know however long and it you, it'll be useful to you because you'll look back and because that's happened to me so many times I've looked back to these like talks and I'm like oh my gosh and I can recognize it and and yeah and sometimes it. it can even just be one sentence like I remember when um um who was it I can't remember now who was somebody would say not my circus not my monkey <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many I had never heard that before apparently it's a saying from the south she was raised in the south <laughs> I cannot tell you how often that saying has come to mind here people say um stay in your own lane 
Mm -hmm. But when she said, not my circus, not my monkey, I just chuckled. And, you know, it's, it's so true. Just, you know, so yeah, I love that sharing stories really applies to all of us. Absolutely. Good story, Julia. Thanks for <laughs> cluing us into that, sharing that with us. Yeah. That wasn't a bad story at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It wound up being a good story that we all learn from. Yeah. yeah. A, a difficult moment, a challenging, <laughs> yes. challenging yeah, few a few hours. <laughs> but you got it together. It came together. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she even asked for um, to take the rest home. Right? I know that surprised me because. She's very picky when um, it comes to food. Like it, she wanted to see everything I ordered and I had to take multiple trips to the back of the airplane to show her like the takeout I ordered. And she'd be like, okay, I want this, 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 and this. Only at this time and blah, blah, blah. And it's just always something so complicated and she'll just like take a bite of something and then be done. So I'm like, does she like it or does she just not eat a lot? I'm confused. <laughs> And it's, it's always something that she complains about and like, what's, it'll always be the bed. Like it's not comfortable enough and this and that, but like the bed, she didn't complain about it all. And it was actually a deflated air mattress with just the mattress topper, like the foam cushion. And I laid on it and I was like, this, this is pretty sturdy. I don't, I don't think she'll have anything to say, but the whole time I'm like, please don't say anything. Please don't say anything. <laughs> like <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it right now. And it just, everything went perfectly fine, but I, I would, I didn't have so much pressure on myself because on the way back versus the way there, I knew it wasn't my fault and like giving myself that, like pass of like you know it's not you that that is the problem there's just a problem that mm. was like okay I, I can see what I can do about the problem now because it's not me <laughs> yeah that's beautiful that's a beautiful mm -hmm. sentence there's a problem here but I'm not the problem it's not me yeah yeah what a difference that thought made that thought made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what Sid meant when he said to that um, everything can change with just one thought, if you can find that thought. Meaning to me, I don't know, I wanna know what it means to you guys, but to me, it seems to mean that be open to a new thought. You don't know when it's going to come. It's not something you can manufacture like Julie was saying. We don't believe in the thoughts we create, we, we manufacture. But if you're open to seeing something in a different light, and you know, we get the feeling of our negative thoughts. We can feel that negativity. So that's like the signal. Okay, it's time to look for a new thought. I don't know when it's going to come but I'm open, so, yeah. something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes more sense than the original statement because I thought like he was saying like you can create something, like create a different thought, which like we were saying that doesn't, that doesn't work. So yeah, that, that makes more sense that if you're just in, in more of a like a receptive position yeah. then you're like yeah okay like it yeah. comes and it, if it feels good it sticks you know yeah yeah which goes along with looking for a nice feeling look for a pleasant feeling and yeah so it doesn't mean that you're a bad person because you have an unpleasant feeling it's just part of being human <laughs> All humans get unpleasant feelings and thoughts. Yeah. But the less we take them seriously, the better off we are. Yeah. So how about you, Linda? And how about you, Brett? 
Any good stories for us? No, it's been it's been quiet really. Um, you know, just I mean, this was like the first full weekend that I had my kids from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to today and tomorrow night. Um, so you know, that's you know, just trying to get them used to that or whatever. My I got my son will be eight at the end of this month. My daughter's coming up on ten. And they're just having a problem with it, you know. So I'm and they trying will. to and they're just, you know, not taking it so, so great. So it's just, you know, trying to keep them active and happy about things. So it was, it's, it's been draining. And then, you know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, you know, it's difficult. Yeah. So like being a camp counselor, huh? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just trying to get all that situated. And then, wow. um, you know, it's just still such a, I don't even know what type of situation, you know, last Tuesday night, she FaceTimes my kids and then I talked to her and she's bawling her eyes out. So I was like, come over, she comes over and then she's just, she doesn't know what she wants. She's like, I think I made a mistake, but now she's been here since 845 packing, packing up more of her stuff. So I'm like, what are you doing? Are we separating, getting divorced or are we not? Like, it's just, and she just keeps saying, I need my time and this and that, but I don't know. I just like seeing this tonight, packing up more stuff. But then a week ago, you're telling me something different. I don't know. I think we got to have a sit down talk. Just be like, this, this is it. You know, I don't know. You do know. You're telling yourself you don't know. You, your wisdom yeah. knows. I would say that to give her what she wants. She just want, is asking for time. Right. Doesn't mean forever. She's not asking for to separate forever. She's just asking for some time. Yeah. But it's just like Which the, you like, hear when you're in, when you're in um, a good state of mind. Because hmm. I think I heard that last time when we were on the call last Monday in mystery school. Yeah. You were feeling more confident and. Yeah. What it is for me, is just like the roller coaster. Yeah. Like right. last Tuesday, she's over here ball, like crying and everything. I ended up making her dinner because she hadn't eaten yet. So it was just like, all right, you're like way up here high. And then, you yes. know, like now she's packing up more stuff. Yes. And like, I just heard the garage door shut, like shut. So she left. So I'm like, what are you doing? When are we here? And then you go with me to a block party, you know, like our whole neighborhood throws like a party every year. So I had, I had an RSVP jet last Tuesday night. And then she had texted me when she got home. I was like, Hey, are you going? I'm like, yeah, I was going to bring the kids down. Oh. And I was just like, you know what? Let me throw it out there. What do I have to lose? I'm like, you want to go? And she's like, Oh, that would be okay. And I'm like, why, like, why wouldn't it? You know? So, you know, she came to that and then left and then texted the two other women down the street. Oh, I just came home and I'm watching Netflix by myself on board. So then why'd you leave? Like, you know, it's just, it's. I don't much. know if uh, Linda and Julia know that. Um, so Brett's wife is living like 10 minutes away. She yeah, just needed to take some time to sort some things out and, you know, um, I don't see it as the end. I see it as it could be a beautiful beginning. It could be an illusion. It's my, you know, it's an illusion I'm in. But what are the what do you two hear about this, Linda and Julia? Yeah. It definitely, like just what you're saying, you know, that it. Yeah, just sounds like, yeah, just right now, just space. Although I can see where, you know, it can sound like, I know in my own head, I could, the back and forth, I could make up like, oh, this is something different. But yeah, definitely sounds like space. And I've definitely had friends, people that have, you know, had that, gone through that kind of up and down, take some space and, and then, you know, kind of came back around. And it's, 
it's very nice like what you're mentioning about just your, the kindness that you're showing her and the um I don't know it just seems like I'm sure that 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 helps if that makes yeah, sense I mean, just you know, and, yeah and then like she was saying oh to the kids before I hopped on the crawl here she's like oh yeah we gotta go grocery shopping when you guys come over and this and that and she's like oh, I don't have a grill so I was like so tell me what day you want to come over and we can plan dinner you know and that it was it was it's but it's like weird so it was last weekend was her weekend with the kids and she invited me miniature golfing with them isn't that sweet like, yeah so it's like but that's where it's so so hard for me mentally to like understand the time thing but then like and of course i'm not gonna say no i want to see the kids and obviously spend time with her or whatever but like you say you want time but then you're texting me call or call them you're texting me whatever you're doing that day and hey, what are you doing at three o'clock? Can we pick you up to go mini golfing? Well, yeah, but you just moved out and want your time and now you want to see me. So it's just, you know, it's hard, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I don't, I, obviously I've never been through this. Um, yeah. I don't like it at all, that's for sure. But, mm -hmm. um, well, you know yeah. what we could do? Well, the four of us can step back and have a look at, the roller coaster of life. Mm -hmm. This is like yeah. a microcosm of the roller coaster of life. The ups and downs, and they will throw you. They can throw mm -hmm. you for a loop, yeah. and, right? They can really yeah. toss you around. Now, what do we know about thought and consciousness and mind mm -hmm. that can keep us out of the? extreme highs and extreme lows so that we can be more even keel even with things doing loop-de-loops around us what do we know about the principles that can keep us more on even ground and and not follow the loop-de-loops around i think that just the the knowing that other people's actions and like their words and what they're doing don't really reflect you. They reflect them. So she's really just trying to figure herself out. I mean, I don't know how long you guys have been together, but I'm sure you're different people now than probably when you met and the perspective, just stepping away from that and like looking at like, well, who do you want to be? And like, if you do want to be together, now would be a perfect, if not amazing time to just sit there and be like, well, you know, we can be these people together and like, we can work on this together. But definitely the, the stepping back is like, I think that is a blessing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Especially like for the kids as well, because it's like, it's showing that you guys can still get along, mm -hmm. even if you're not, you know, yeah. like in the same relationship or in the same household it's showing that you guys can get along so I know it's confusing and like emotionally confusing that you know she's saying one thing and doing another but it's kind of working out for the best because you're spending time together as a family still you know yeah and that's the thing it's like all right well you know yeah we're spending time together we're doing the family thing so it's like the whole time thing to me is more like, I understand you need time, but like, how, like moving out, how does that bring you back together? And how does that like work on things, you know? Like that's, those are the thoughts going through my mind. And it's like, like you asked how long we've been, well, this coming, this coming Saturday, we'll be married 11 years. And we've been together just for, just a 14, I would say all together. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just a whole different, you know aspect like like I'm not used to this like tonight I had to play like doctor I had to do this I was just so many different caps I had to throw on like my son's got an ear infection so he was started about it last night and I was like all right well maybe you got he was swimming in the pool all day so I was like, maybe you got water in your hair so I use a q-tip and I was like, just lay on your left ear let the water drain out you'll be fine didn't say anything this morning pick him up from camp he's been complaining about his ear so I'm like all right well, what do I got to do now so I'm like forget it. it's like bring him down to the urgent care in the center of, of Unionville there in, in my town, excuse me. Um, you know, 
he's got an ear infection. I got to come home. We got to mow the lawn. The kids feed the dogs for me. I cook dinner. Then we're just about to go on a bike ride and CVS calls. So I'm like, all right, let me run all the way across town, pick up your medicine. Then we went on our bike ride. Then they took the showers and it was here, but it was just like, man, like I'm not used to doing all this myself. You know, it's usually, <laughs> right. hey, you right. get them in the, you Mr. Know, like, Mom. Yeah, it's like, hey, you get them in the shower. I'm going to run and go pick up his medicine. By the time I'm back, they're ready for bed. It's just, you know, just so I think different. that that is like perfect example of resiliency. Yeah. Honestly, like you are so out of your element. Honestly, probably both of you are so out of your element because you're doing the job that two people did and now as one person. And yeah. so it's kind of, it's going to make you more appreciative for that other person. And yeah. like, wow, I respect all these things you did. I didn't know that's how it was because I'm doing it now. And like, you know, I appreciate that. I respect that. And it's seeing things in like differently. That's what I think that the space does. It's like seeing things differently and having a new outlook on it. Yeah. Well said, Julia. Well said. Seriously. Yeah. Talk about like having opportunities for fresh <laughs> thoughts to come in that maybe hadn't occurred before. Yeah. Right. It's like, so I know if I call the doctor, they're going to be like, yeah, it's after, it's like, I don't know, it was like 4.30 or something. So like, this isn't going to work. And I know there's an urgent care right there. So I'm like, you know what, we're going. And then that we walked in and has he been here before? Yeah, he's been here numerous times. <laughs> he's a boy. So, and of course you see the same doctor every time, you know, it goes in one time with his head, one time with his finger, his ankle. I'm like, oh God, they probably think like we beat this kid, but he's just a <laughs> rambunctious, crazy little monster. That's what he is. That's what I call him. Like if, it, if he was awake right now, I would say monster, come here and boom, there he would be right there. <laughs> but no, he's a good kid. They both are, you know, and they like, like tonight, you know, they knew I was hustling to get all over the place. And, you know, he says, he's like, you know, dad, if, if the four of us were together, this would have been easier for you. you say know, that just, again. If the four of us, what? He said, if the four of us were, were here together. He said, this would have been easier for you. Oh, yeah, but I'm like, you know what, Mason? Yeah, but you got to do what you got to do. And then my daughter goes into, you know, the whole thing. But you could have ran to the store and we could have showered <laughs> on my mama's home. And I'm like, yes, yes, you guys have all the answers. Like, <laughs> then go do it. <laughs> uh, everybody's getting a chance, first of all, to appreciate yeah. it, right? I mean... I'll bet you and your wife are appreciating each other in ways that, you know, couples wind up taking each other for granted when they're together for a period of time. Whole new appreciation. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I mean, she really hasn't said anything about, you know, what she's seeing, how she's feeling, doing this and that. So I just, you know, I, I just keep it quiet. I'm just trying to, just not like talk to her and not in a negative way just you want your space fine like I don't send text messages like today she text messaged me about a couple of things for like school how we want to do things and I was like yep that's it but other than that like I'm not going to text her tonight when we get off this and be like hey good seeing you should be like what's that doing it's like she knows it was good seeing me like she came over here for a reason you know like to kind of go like this to me you know to know be like hey I'm still here yeah I know you're still there I didn't, I didn't understand that. She came over. What do you mean to do this to you? Just to, you know, make sure I saw her. Make sure you saw her? Yeah. Because she knows it's, it's, it's difficult for me. She knows it's difficult. So you mean yeah. she came over to help you feel better? No, just to show up to be like, here I am and now I'm leaving. So you're thinking that she's doing it just to like get, get to you or get back yeah. at you or something like get, that? Yeah, just like knowing punish that, like, you? Yeah, just like knowing that, like, why was she, you know, because I text her and I said, hey, I said, I got my meeting at eight o'clock. I said, you want to FaceTime? And she's like, well, I'm out. I can stop over. So, but then when she said where she was, she was on the other side of town. So it's like, you made, you made a point to come over. 
I don't know, you know, to, to get more stuff or just to be like, hey, here I am. And, you know, I'm going home again or I don't know. Or maybe it's just on me. Well, I don't know about the, the other two of you on this, <laughs> on this screen, but that's not how I took it. No? Yeah, no. not me either. Okay. What about right, you, that's, Linda? That's yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, I, it just sounds like, again, from everything you've said that, you know, sounds like she's just kind of in a space and doesn't know, but it sound, I wouldn't have taken it that way. I think, yeah, sometimes too that, like when you say that, like when we were talking about the feeling when, Lori, you were saying that before, it's been such a helpful guide to me. Like if it makes me feel like shit, like a certain way, I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to lay off of that thinking because I just think there's, I don't really, I guess just, can you know for sure? Like, I guess that's what I always think because it doesn't sound like that to me. Especially if you said she was all the way over <laughs> somewhere else. Everything you said sounds like she just doesn't know and she's kind of confused. Well, yeah. and that's the thing too. She's definitely confused. And, yeah. you know, I mean, she's she's talking to somebody herself and, and trying yeah. to figure herself out and everything. But it's just, you know, I don't know, like, like, like I've told her, like, I'm the person, like, or not like, but if there's a problem, like, I fix it. Like, I rally all the troops together and, hey, what's going on? Like, how, and just the time and not being able to fix this is just bothering me because it's, it's that person I am. Like, I don't like to let things fester. Like, you know, if whatever it is, if there's an issue, let's go, let's take care of it today. Like, what's the problem? My kid comes home from school upset about something or whatever, what happened? I don't want to talk about it. All right, give him five, 10 minutes to go back into your room. Hey dude, what happened today? This, this, and this. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's fix it or, or whatever. It's, I'm just that person where I just, I just want things addressed, fixed, so that everybody's happy moving back on and continuing in life. And it's just this lull here that I've had since like about uh, June of this, I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing type deal is just killing me. So <laughs> That's Brett, the bottom line. Brett, check it yes. out. A few things I want to say. Let me see. A few things ran through my head. One is, what if this is actually an opportunity for you to be in the moment more, to relax more because you've been in the mode of being Mr. Fix-It. And this is an opportunity for you to, I don't know what I want to say, for you maybe, who knows what the, I just hear opportunity in this. That is screaming at me, opportunity. Who knows what it's an opportunity for? Maybe it's an opportunity for you to allow the rest of the family to work with you mm. rather than you having to be the guy who fixes everything. I mean, look at how your, your two children came out and one is saying, um, well, dad, you do this and we'll do that, right? Like they're already yeah. coming to your aid. Right. This is an opportunity for the four of you to work as a team. Because maybe, you know, that's maybe that's been hard on your wife. And, you know, most people would think how admirable that there's a man of the house who's fixing things and taking care of things. Yeah. You know, something happens. Let's let's get it straight. Let's work it out. Let's get it straight. And who knows? I don't know. But maybe. The other three people have felt, you know, like pushed aside or I don't know. I'm, I, I have no idea, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I just see it as an opportunity to see possibility. And the other thing I wanted to say is how similar this is to Julia's story. Mm. I mean, the story yeah, I think we're itself. a lot alike, honestly, because yeah. I was like, if I have a problem, I need to fix it immediately. And the last week of mystery school, Linda said something about when you feel you have to take action immediately, uh. you actually have to do the opposite. 
And that blew my mind because I'm so like, I want to be in control of everything going on in my life so that I know, you know, so I can be ready and prepared. And it's, it does not work like that. Like life, life in general doesn't work like that. So yeah, I I like what you said, Lori, about it could be an opportunity, you know, to like try a new dynamic. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah be more inclusive, like be able to accept their help maybe. And you know, like you and Julia's stories tonight where you both went into um, the negative, right? Like Julia's beating up on herself and you're sort of beating up on your wife. (laughs) A little bit on your wife. (laughs) We really call a spade a spade. You're like, what's wrong with her? Yeah. <laughs> it's good to laugh at ourselves you know like mm-hmm. we we all do this stuff but like the feeling using the feeling as a guide is so helpful like it like brett was the first one on tonight before you two came on and he said you know i'm just not i'm not up to speed i'm not really feeling my best tonight so knowing that keeps us, keeps you from taking what you think seriously, Mm -hmm. right? Like Julia realized I, she was out of it. She was like in a bad state of mind, nervous, worried. And so she was creating all this negative possibility. I'm going to get fired. They're, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. It was all a bunch of negative stuff. And so, Brett, same for you. Yeah. You're not in the best state of mind. Welcome to humanity. We all right. have our ups and downs. And you yeah. knew it. You knew that. That's beautiful that you realize that because that realization can keep you from buying into what you're thinking that she's just trying to get at you and make you feel yeah. bad. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, she said, oh, now I have to go home and watch Netflix myself. And I'm thinking to myself, perfect opportunity to invite her. Well, you know, you can watch Netflix with me right here. Yeah. I'm here. You don't have to go. <laughs> yeah. See what the difference is. See how to look for opportunity and possibility. That's the direction. That's where a nice state of mind, or how does it put it, um, a nice feeling. That's where a nice feeling is in opportunity and possibility. Yeah. Even if she were to say, no, I can't do that. Because she's got a lot of thinking about how she's got to find herself. She's got to find her independence. You know, she could very well be feeling that she's been um, letting you take the lead. No, women, it, like, I'm sure Linda can speak to this, right? How, how long is, have you been married, Linda? Uh, we're coming up on 20 years. How many? 20. 20. Almost 20. Yeah, almost 20. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're not old enough for a 20 year marriage. Uh, Yeah, I I am. (laughs) (laughs) And then some. (laughs) But it doesn't, yeah. I'm sure there were times where you felt like, oh my gosh, losing myself. Women, especially, they feel like they lose Uh, themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Had just, and just was spiraling and, and just really like rough go. And, and it was really hard for my, husband and and um but but yeah but then and honestly it was because my state of mind I was just so stirred up and so and that's what when you describe what you're describing Brett like when she says she's confused I just think believe her (laughs) she's confused her state of mind and and I don't it's not really about like you I don't you know what I mean it's like it wasn't really about you know my times with my husband it was just I was really stirred up and then everything looks terrible you know, and then you want to try to fix everything. 
And so sometimes it ends up being like, you need to fix your marriage or you need to fix your kids or you need to fix your life. And so, I don't know, just being able to see like now that it, I think I don't rush as quickly to try to fix outside things. Cause I'm like, I wait a little bit just to see like, okay, wait a minute. When I know my mind is stirred up that I just need to kind of settle first. And then is there even anything to do? Cause sometimes there's nothing to do really once I settle yeah. down, but. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was great. Was there anything in particular that your husband did during that time period when you were feeling confused and. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because really what I was thinking, like it reminded me, you know, Brett, just what you were describing, like as you were describing everything, I just was struck with such a tender feeling of like, just um, like that, you know, just even that you have said to her, you know, do you want to come to the block party? And then she's like, Oh, like, can I do that? Or just what you were describing. And that was like, what my husband did was like, he's like, you know, I really was having like panic attacks at that time and just was, you know, mentally not feeling great. And, and he just said to me, like the one day he just was like, he just looked at me and he just said, you know, I really hope you feel better. And it was like the dearest thing because, you know, I know at that time it looked a little bit like maybe, you know, things weren't so great between us. And when he said that, it just touched me so much. And it just was like, oh, like he doesn't worry so much about all of that. He just, just wants me to feel better. And so anyway, and I'm hearing that from you. And I just think that's really, I think that matters so much and I think just having that goodwill and then just that honestly if anything that I learned in this process because it was right around that time that I started to like come across the principles was like I just learned like that scared panicked feeling is not it like there's something else to see I don't know what it is I, I you know it wouldn't always come to me but I just came more and more to trusting that there was something else, even if I didn't know what it was in the moment. So, yeah, trusting, trusting that there's something more and And more that that beautiful. goodwill really, that goodwill goes so, like, I just think that goes really far, you know, just that, that goodwill. Loving. Yeah. Yeah. Goodwill. Mm. Yeah. To show her goodwill and that you care about her. Yeah. No pressure, no pressure that you're, you're there for her. You're su supporting her. This is what she needs for herself. You trusting that she knows what she needs for herself. Yeah. yeah. Just go there and, you know, just, I mean, it's going to be time to just kind of just ride it out, see what, see what the outcome is. And, you know, like I told you, I'm going to continue to stay positive towards it and just, you know. Yeah. Just love her. Yeah. yeah. Just love her. She's going through something. And it's important. Whatever she's going through is important for her evolution. Yeah. And you're there for her. Anytime. It was really beautiful. Earlier, Brett was saying that he told her that whenever she wants to talk, she can wake him up. Just call anytime. Yeah. Talk about goodwill. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it is. that awesome? Yeah. 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 I think too, like, in those moments, like when you're describing just Brett, you know, like it's kind of, you're in that, like kind of what feels like no man's land or like, it doesn't like, you don't really know. And I think too, like, you know, in those moments, I know my mind, like, and that's the time my mind likes to wander and just make stuff up. Like, Oh, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. And I think that's just another thing that I've been seeing is like, I don't know what's going to happen. And, or I don't know that that, Thing is going to happen and it's like the more that it's almost like I think again I like the feeling of when my mind go, makes up some scenario that makes me feel awful it's almost just like I'm just like okay I'm just 
and I just don't go there anymore. Or I mean, I do, but I think I just catch it sooner. Like, okay, I really don't know. So, you know, but I can appreciate the not knowing doesn't always feel very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's the big, and that's what I try to keep telling myself and, you know, changing, you know, like my thought to something else was just like, you know, how long, like, is this going to go on for? And, and it's like, well, there is, there's two outcomes of this, you know? So it's just like, I'm trying my best on everything, but I can still get the outcome that I don't want. And it's just like, well, you know, and like, like I've talked to a lot of my, like, what I'm like, you know, a lot of my close friends about it and everything. Like they said that like, you're doing everything you, you need to do. So either way, if it doesn't work out with you two, you know, I'm better in myself doing it. So it's, it's a positive any way you look at it, but it's just not the pot. Like it would be a positive the outcome because I'm working on myself, but then the negative outcome is that obviously we don't, you know, stay together, but you know, there is good out of that from, you know, all my stuff, but. You know what I wonder hearing that, I wonder why are you even thinking about that? about the future, like worst case scenario. Why, why are you even thinking about that? It's prepping myself, you know, I mean, cause I, I really don't know where it's gonna go. So I, you know, I just, I don't wanna put all my eggs in one basket and get all excited. Like, you know, oh yeah, she wants to do this sometimes. She wants to do that. You know, she invites me there or, she, or to go with them or vice versa or whatever, but. But all of that is future thinking. Yeah. If you're in the moment, if you're in the moment, really in the moment, you, then you're just enjoying being with her in this moment. Right. Playing miniature golf or without thinking what's around the corner, what's in the future. None of us have. None of yeah, us have. Just a uh, ball or whatever. That everything is unknown. It's just that sometimes in our life, it's obvious that there's an unknown here. Right. But that's true for all of us all the time. It's a huge unknown, the future. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, even if this wasn't going on, I, you know, if I wasn't having this problem, you don't know what's going to go on tomorrow or next week or next month or. Right. You and know? you learn that in a big way. Yeah. Brett, I don't know if it was mentioned on the call last week, but Brett and his family went through a big fire. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. We lost Talk about house. the unknown. Yeah. yeah we, last January 2nd of 2020. Less than house. a year ago. Yeah, we had a house fire. So, um, you know, so we had the house fire, then you had COVID, then you had the homeschooling. And it was, it was a lot. And I, I think it was a lot of unknowns. Yeah. And I think a lot of the stress and arguments and stuff that we had were about the house and about this stuff here. But, you know, like I said, I'm like, it's over and done with. Like, what were we supposed to do? You know, like we had, and like, not that the three of you on here didn't have it, but we got like, you know, sucker punched even more with being with the fire during all this. And, it was a lot. So, um, I, you know, I think that's got stuff to do with it too, but, you know, nothing I can control there. I don't usually give advice, but my advice would be think less and love more. <laughs> Ooh, you can't go wrong with that. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. I mean, we're so all of us, not just Brett, all of us. I'm no, sure yeah. The two of Me you would too. say the same. It's so easy to get caught up in our thinking and create these big thought storms and scare ourselves of the worst case scenario. And all that does is put us in a low mood where we're less able to bring forth a feeling of love and understanding. And that's what your wife needs more than ever right now. Yeah. Because I'm sure she's got a lot of people in her life, her family, et cetera, judging her. Yeah. Yeah. 
and yeah, it, it puts you in a position to um, maintain hope. <laughs> yeah, maintain hope and and um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, but it requires patience. It really does. Yeah, now it's still doing so. Yeah. That's so cool. Just I know we're at time, but just like it isn't it? It's like that's what you're doing. Like I just I I love that. Like it's just like, yep, there you are, you're doing it. And even the preparedness part, it's almost like like it's such a thing, like I need to be prepared. And it's like, oh, but but just everything that you've said, it's like it's like I think we are, I think we're born prepared to like deal with anything that comes up, like when we see you know how we work like it's like okay things will come up like you made it through a house fire you made it through covid during after having a house fire and then now you've got all of this and it's like and what i just keep hearing is like you know yes it's been very difficult but yet here you are and you're you just here you are i mean yeah. it's, it's like no, i know i, yeah, I, I mean it's like wow <laughs> like you right like that to me is what being prepared is is like it's not something that we have to to do or get ready for it's more like it's just there you are you are it and you're just and so like you just keep showing up like certainly you seem to like you've got everything you need because you keep showing up <laughs> yeah. yeah that That's was beautiful so, yeah. beautiful so well said same for julia yes she was born yeah. prepared we're yeah all right we all yes said something like we're all born prepared it's yeah. true Things happen and somehow we have the wisdom to handle it. Like Julia's situation. Yeah. Same right. thing. How cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful that you pointed that out. Yeah. You already prepared, Brent. Yeah. No. Nothing no. to think through. Yeah. No. Less, less thinking. To, <laughs> less yeah, thinking. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's great. What a great hour this was. Woo. Yeah. So, so good. So much was said. Oh, and that went by so fast. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, it is. I can't believe it's not. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is one of those um, gatherings that, you know, there's a, there was a lot said in here. You may want to listen to it again. I'll have the recording up uh, probably tomorrow sometime. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. This was so nice. Yeah, Just you. nice to be here with each of all of you. Yeah. 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 Thank okay. you all for coming. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Okay. Yeah. Right. See you guys next week. Alaska. Yeah. Oh, Alaska. Oh, happy.